Slater's rule is going to be the topic in this lesson. And Slater's rules are used to get a better approximation of the screening or shielding constant uh, when calculating effective nuclear charge. Now, real big caveat here is most of you taking general chemistry will not be on the hook for Slater's rules, probably will never see them or use them. However, some percentage of you, maybe 20-30%, will be on the hook for these, especially if maybe you're in a, like a, a general chemistry for majors class. Maybe you've seen this. So I want to take some time to cover this, but uh, if this was not covered in your general chemistry class, then just skip right on past this video and move on to looking at uh, ionization energy in the next. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep. You can find those courses at chadsprep.com. Now, this lesson's part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year. So if you wanna be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. So let's dive into Slater's rules here. And so again, Slater's rules are gonna get you a better approximation of the screening constant so you can get a better approximation of the effective nuclear charge. Now, in the last lesson with atomic radius, we used effective nuclear charge to explain a trend in atomic radius. Uh, and we found out that as long as you're looking at the valence electrons, the effective nuclear charge was just simply equal to the same as the number of valence electrons in an atom. So for the alkali metals, which have one valence electron, it turns out the effective nuclear charge on the valence electrons was plus one. For the alkaline earth metals, plus two. For boron's group, plus three. Carbon's group, plus four. Nitrogen's group, plus five. The chalcogens with oxygen, plus six. The halogens, plus seven. And the noble gases, plus eight. So the, again, those are the effective nuclear charge approximations we used uh, in the last lesson. Well, we're gonna get a little bit better approximation here. And so a couple things we gotta factor in. So uh, what Slater uh, accounted for was two things. One, in the last lesson, we said that all the electrons in the same shell as the outermost shell don't really screen each other. Well, that's not true. He came up with some rules for screening values, and they don't actually, actually, you know, actually equal zero in this case. Uh, we'll see some values like for 1s electrons screening each other's 0.3, but for the rest is usually 0.35. Now, it turns out we also said that all the core electrons are going to screen, have a, essentially a screening value of 1. So, but that's not true either. We'll see that some are going to be a little bit less than 1 if they're not so close to the nucleus compared to the ones we're looking at. All right, so easiest way to kind of break into these rules is actually just to work through some examples of applying these rules that use every single one of them somewhere along the way. So we're going to start with helium first. So... And helium has just simply got an electron configuration of 1s2, total of two electrons. It's got a, a z value, the nuclear charge of two, same as the number of protons in the atomic number. And so in this case, what you wanna to do to calculate out this new screening constant is you have to decide which electron you're gonna do this for. Well, the only electrons it has are two 1s electrons. And so it turns out what you need to do is pull one of them out. And so in this case, I'm going to pull one of these two electrons out and then just say that it's the other one that is screening it. And so that's what we're going to kind of do. And here we just have two electrons and they're in the same orbital. So it's, it's going to be a little weird. But what we're going to do is we're going to pull the one of the valence electrons out in every single example we do and then see how it is screened by all the remaining electrons. So here we're going to pull one of these out. And once we pull that one electron out, I'll represent it like that, then the only thing he's going to be screened by is the other 1s electron. And in that case, for a 1s electron, it's got a special number associated with it being screened by the other 1s electron. And again, we never use this value of 0.3 for anything else, and that's why I wanted to use helium here so we'd get an example of it in. Uh, and it's going to have a screening value of 0.3. And so for helium here, when we do z effective equals z minus s, the z again is 2, number of protons in the nucleus. And then minus s, we really just have that total of 0.3, just that one electron. And we're going to get an effective nuclear charge, therefore, of 1.7. Now, for the other noble gases, it would have been plus 8 in the last lesson, but helium just would have been plus 2. Well, we found out it's actually only plus 1.7, so the attraction of the valence electron for the nucleus is not as great as we would have predicted in the last lesson. Okay, so that's helium. Let's make this a little more challenging here. So the next example I want to take a look at here is carbon. And so carbon's electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And in this case, we want to examine one of the outermost electrons, one of those p electrons. So we'll pull out that electron here, and that's going to leave us with one left in that p orbital right there. And so we're going to see how all of these remaining electrons screen that one we kind of set aside, one of those p electrons. All right, so the way this works then is 
You want to group all the S and P's of a given shell together in your electron configuration here because those get grouped together according to Slater's rules. And so for this 2P electron, and let's highlight that he's a 2P electron, anybody else that's in the 2S or 2P is going to screen him by a value of 0 0.35. Well, we've got a total of three electrons in that same group, if you will. And so that's going to be three times 0.35. And so for our screening constant, those three electrons contribute 0.35 each. And again, uh, in the last lesson, we just said, oh, same, same shell, ignore them. Well, we're not ignoring them. Cool, then we'll work our way down to the 1s electrons. And the 1s electrons, compared to the 2p, are in the previous shell, the n minus 1 shell. And so in this case, for an s or p electron, so anything in the n minus 1 shell contributes 0 0.85. And we've got two electrons in there. Cool, so now from here we're going to add this up, and in this case, you know, why don't we just go calculator on this. We've got 3 times 0.35 plus 2 times 0.85, we're going to get 2.75. So again, that's our screening constant when we're calculating effective nuclear charge now, a better approximation than we would have gotten without Slater's rules here. And so our effective nuclear charge then is going to equal Z. And for carbon, atomic number 6 minus our new screening value of 2.75. And here we're going to find out we're going to get 3.25. Cool, and keep in mind that, you know, uh, Carbon's got four valence electrons, and in the last lesson, we would have approximated that effective nuclear charge as plus four. Well, again, now we find it's only plus 3.25, not quite as great an attraction, and so not maybe as small as we might have otherwise predicted is carbon going to be as far as atomic radius goes. Cool, so that's carbon. Let's uh, use an even larger atom so we can experience some of these other rules as well. So the next example we want to look at is vanadium here. And I wanted to pick a transition metal. So you'd see an example like that. Students often really struggle to apply Slater's rules to these transition metals, or at least things that have trans, uh, D electrons or F electrons in them. So definitely want to do an example there. And uh, with vanadium here, we've got something funky here. So the valence electrons, well, we've already filled up the 4s. Now we're filling in the 3ds. And so what's considered valence here? Well, they all are. And so we'll find out, you know, we found out in chapter six that actually if you were going to remove an electron from vanadium, you wouldn't actually remove a 3D, you would remove a 4S. And so in this case, we're actually going to try and calculate the uh, effective nuclear charge for both the 4S and 3D electrons. We'll do two different calculations and, uh, and maybe we'll see why we end up removing a 4S before we end up removing a 3D based on those calculations. All right, one other thing you should know about applying Slater's rules is when you go to apply Slater's rules, you really should write uh, all your, ele your electron configuration, if you will, in order of increasing uh, principal quantum numbers. So principal quantum number one for the first shell, two for the second shell, but notice 3s, 3p, and then really we should write the 3d before the 4s. So I'm going to rearrange that order for the purpose of applying Slater's rules. And so we're going to write 3d3 and then 4s2. That way all the principal quantum number three subshells are together. All right, so now we've got to talk about which electron we're going to look at. And I'm going to start with the 4s, and then we'll take and pull out a 3d instead. But if I pull out one of those 4s electrons, that means I'm only going to have one left that can cause some shielding or screening here. And so this other 4s electron that we pulled out has a chance to be screened by all of these, and we'll just see what kind of effect we have. Well, he could be screened by this 4s, and that's going to be an electron that's in the same group. In this case, it's not 2p anymore. It's now another 4s electron, and that's going to contribute 0 0.35. So when we go to calculate s here, our screening constant, we're going to have one electron contributing 0 0.35 because it's in the same group. So, and then now we're going to find out that all of these electrons, so for an s and p electron, we're just going to make those in the uh, the previous shell, we're looking at a 4s electron, an electron in the fourth shell. Those are all just in the 4 minus 1, the third shell, the 3s, the 3p, the 3d, and they're all going to contribute equally according to Slater's rules here. And in this case, each a value of 0.85. And so that's a total of 2 plus 6 is 8 plus 3 is 11. So 11 times 0.85.
cool. And then it turns out everything else is going to be less than or equal to n minus 2. So again, we're looking at an electron in the 4s, the fourth principal quantum number. So n minus 2 here, 4 minus 2, is 2 or lower. And everything that we've got left is 2 or lower. And so uh, instead of looking at them separately, we could all actually lump these all together here as just being n minus 2 or less. And so in this case, we've got 6, 8, 10 electrons, and they're going to be shielded essentially fully, uh, a full uh, screening of 1 for each of those electrons. So we'll add in another 10 times 1. And get our screening constant here. So we've got 0.35 plus 11 times 0.85 plus another 10 times 1, or just plus 10, and get 19.7. And so we go to calculate our effective nuclear charge here. Again, for vanadium, the atomic number is 23. So that's our Z value. And we see that our S value is 19.7. And so our Z effective here is going to equal 3.3. Okay, we don't really have anything to compare that to because we didn't really deal with the transition metals in the last lesson. wasn't anything we need to be concerned with. So, uh, however, what I do want to compare this number to is what if we had pulled out a 3D electron instead of the 4S electron? And so let's go back to this. So I'm going to take this 4s electron and put it back into the electron configuration, so 4s2. And instead, I'm going to pull out one of these 3ds. So there's only two left there. And again, we're going to see how all the remaining electrons are going to screen the 3d electron I'm examining here. So here's what we got left. And we'll start off with a new calculation for s here. And so now we need to look at, since we're looking at a, a d electron, we'll be applying the rules down here. And specifically, we're looking at a 3d electron now. And if there are any other electrons in the 3d, they're going to contribute 0.35. Well, hi, we have two more. They're going to contribute that 0.35. So we'll get 2 times 0 0.35 plus. All right, for the d electrons, or f electrons, it would apply. What's nice is that everything else that's closer just contributes one, and it's nice. So, and notice there's no, there's no uh, value for like n plus one. We're in the 3D, we're, lo or we're looking at a 3D. And so for anything higher atomic number, we just ignore them. They don't really contribute anything, at least not according to Slater's rules. It's only the ones before here. And again, even if they're in the same shell, but have a lower, uh, 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 what am I looking at? lower magnetic quantum number, so like, in this case, we're looking at the three Ds, uh, which has an L value of two, if you recall, with quantum numbers. So if I have an L value of one or zero, i.e. s or p orbitals, uh, then that's what's going to apply to this column right here. So in this case, we're looking at a 3D electron, so the 3s and 3p contribute one. n minus one, which is shell two here, would contribute one. And the 1s's, which is in the n minus two or lower, would also contribute one, which means we can lump all the rest of these electrons from 1s all the way to 3p, and they all just contribute 1. And so that's going to be a total of 6, 8, uh, 14, 16, 18 electrons all contributing 1. So in this case, we don't even need the calculator here. 18 plus 2 times 0.35 is 0.7, so 18.7. And so now if we go to calculate our effective nuclear charge, We'll get 23 minus 18.7. So in this case, we're going to get 4.3. And so this was for a 3d electron. This was for a 4s electron. And we can now see the difference here with that effective nuclear charge. And so we can see that the 3d electron actually has a higher effective nuclear charge. It's more attracted to the nucleus. So, and therefore it should be harder to remove. And indeed, uh, we typically remove again a 4s before a 3d electron, and that's consistent with now what we're finding with this calculation of effective nuclear charge using Slater's rules.
If you are part of the 20 or 30% of Gen Chem students who are on the hook for Slater's Rules and you found this lesson helpful, then hit that like button. It lets YouTube know that it should be sharing this with other students as well. If you are looking for practice problems, I technically don't have any for Slater's Rules, uh, but for everything else in the Periodic Trends chapter as well as all of Gen Chem, I've got quizzes, chapter tests, practice final exams, final exam rapid reviews, all in my General Chemistry Master Course. A free trial is available. I'll leave a link in the description. Happy studying.